What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we are going to be going over the new player of the month card in NBA 2K20, my team. So this card right here is going to be the card for going 12-0 in the month of July. So it's going to realistically be a second last of these. I cannot, cannot see this being a case later on after this year, or after this month. Or say after August, struggling to speak. I do not see this card coming out in, or there being a card in September, because while we don't know the pre-order details, we don't know the release date, as far as I know, they there's a good chance they do come this week. So we'll know a little bit more then, but I think it's highly, highly unlikely that you see a September player in a month card, especially because it the way things are, it's probably only for about a week before 2K21 comes out. But I do think we see an August one. That's probably gonna be the last card we see, unless they want to release, re-release -re some cards if they play well in the NBA season. So the card is Michael Beasley, and I'm gonna go over his stats and badges right now. So he is a six foot nine two, um, small four slash two guard. That is kind of the one elite thing about this card is that he's six nine. I don't necessarily think he's the greatest card in the world stats wise. However, Michael Beasley still got an okay release. So he has got a 97 mid-range, he's got a 94-3, he's got a 95 standing dunk, 97 driving dunk, also has got a really good post and fadeaway, he's got great speed speed ball and acceleration, a really good lateral quickness, got a 90 ball handle, 94 block, he's got 89-90 in terms of rebounding, steel is 90 as well, as well as that he has got 52 half badges which is absolutely crazy. So 52 Hall of Fame badges in general is like some of them, like as much as a lot of players. Also 68 badges total, which again is something that's really good. So he has gone Hall of Fame quick draw, Hall of Fame range extender, which is big, which is big. But at the same time, like I don't think that's any different than his pink diamond. I will check a little bit later, but I'm gonna check the stats of his pink diamond just to see how much better in general the um, Opal is in the pink diamond because again, like obviously the Opal's got way better stats. I just want to see is there any like specific badges that he's missing or badges that the pink diamond has if he has got say all the vital ones. But he has also got slippery off ball Hall of Fame uh, volume shooter flanks but release which is good. Handles for days. He's got quick first step, stop and go, tight handles, unpluckable handles for days, floor general, downhill dimer, lap city finisher, post spin ignition, ankle breaker. Pick Dodger, Pickpocket, Jason Artist, Clamps, Heart Crusher, Interceptor, Intimidator, Off Ball, Pest, Pogo, Post New Lockdown, Tireless, or Rebound Chaser, Tireless Defender, Trapper. Um, he has got, okay, he's got no box, brick wall, or worm. Those badges don't really matter, especially if you're playing about the two. They really don't matter whatsoever. Um, Lightning Reflex, I don't know if that does anything. Uh, defensive Leader Gold, again, it doesn't matter because you're going to be playing with a half defensive leader player. So now we are back onto the game. And let's have a look to see these pink time token rewards because Michael Beasley is obviously one of the better ones of these. And I have a weird feeling token rewards are coming out this week. Don't, like again, don't actually quote me on this. I just have a weird feeling that it's going to happen. So he's got a 97 driving dunk. Um, he's also got not great, but not terrible perimeter defense. Pretty okay speed. Obviously nothing like the other one. A 92 lateral quickness. Check the badges. So he's got half clamps. Okay, only go quick to our gold range. So he's gonna be a significant upgrade. He's a lefty. But if you guys want to know what his release is gonna be like on half quick draw, it's not quite half range extender, but if you guys want to just try out his release, see if you like his release, if you go to Showtime, he's Darius Miles, am I right with, or he's not Showtime, sorry, he's Takeover. I'm almost certain Darius Miles right here has got half quick draw. Yeah, he's a half quick draw. Well, he only has gold range extender, and he is right-handed, it will be a very, very similar release because I think he's got Michael Beasley base, Michael Beasley upper. While I'm not gonna go over his SIGs right now for Beasley, let me just say Beasley SIGs are not good. They are not good at all. He's got the T-Mac behind the back, a bad uh, moving cross. He's also got some bad, like, just overall bad things. He's got LeBron's dunk package, which is really good, but it's not. he's not gonna be as good as, for example, if you go to, where is it, players in a month? He's not going to be as good as Rudy. He's not going to be as good as Glenn. But I think he probably slots in as the third best player in the month award. Debatable with Dr. J. Debatable with Dr. J. But he's better than Wilt. He's better than Worthy. I'm saying that right now. He's better than the two of them. It's like Worthy only has 20 all of fame or 30 all of fame badges. No way he's comparable. 
He's better than Jerry. Jerry Lucas is not good. Jerry Lucas has got them T-Rex arms. He's not good. So he currently sits in as a good player at Month Award. Players that I would kind of compare him to in terms of like high high level cards. Honestly, uh, he's like he's not as good as a Kevin Durant. He's not as good as a Jonathan Isaac. I'm trying to think of any wings that he'd be similar to. I don't exactly know his what his defensive tendencies are going to be like. So I'm going to have a look at his tendency right now. Like it's, I'm not, it's not going to be shown on screen for. Actually, I can. Sorry, I can check his tendencies out on the pink diamond because a lot of them say the same. Like maybe if he has high defensive tendencies, he might be able to trigger good defensive animations because of his length. But I don't see that really being the case. Let's have a look right here. A 25 on ball steal, and it's very, very likely that it's going to be the exact same. So it's highly, highly unlikely that it's going to be anything higher than a 25 right there, which is a little bit annoying. So like obviously with this team right here, with his height and stuff, he's going to be better than like Nick Batum. No question about it. But is he going to be anything spectacular? Not really. So what is a good thing to do right now? And I'm not sure if it's a great thing to do today, but over the next three or four days, well, over the next like three days, because Friday, I'm almost certain, it's either gonna be Prime, and if Prime doesn't come out on Friday, something else huge is gonna come out on Friday. Like if they skip on the last Prime again, you better believe, you better believe it is gonna be something absolutely massive that they um, replace it with. It's not gonna be something small. So it's either a case of we're getting prime, we're getting something huge. So the market's gonna crash that day, but I think the market does pick up in the first day or two because everyone's looking for the best overall squads. I will make a video probably, probably later today, to be honest. I probably will make a 12 and 0 squad video about different squads you can make at different price ranges, how I feel like it's best to go about it if you're on a small budget and things like that. But I think that it pushes up the price of the high tier cards a little bit. So I don't think much. Like, for example, because of how good Kareem is, Richard Lewis right now, I'm on Xbox. There's like none of them. So I'm guessing he's probably, I actually picked mine up for a million and a half last week during the market crash. But um, I'm guessing whatever, he's probably about two and a half million. Considering that 22 hours to go, there's one and a half million bids on him. I'm guessing he's probably two and a half million. And I think cards like that are going to stay at the same price. Cards I think might go up a little bit are like the Jimmy Butler. And Jimmy Butler right now is around the 100k MT mark. I say give or take, be the diamond contract only about 20k, so I'm say give or take a little bit, probably 100k. Um, I think for cards like this might go up a little bit because people are going to be trying to get the best team possible. Also, cards that are going to go up, and these cards always go up at the start of every month. Specific silver cards. I'm not going to give the names of any of them. I'm not going to do it because, well, I'm going to do it in another video. But um, <laughs> there are certain silver and gold cards that like I think are spectacular for their ratings. Any silver card with clamps and quick, any gold card with clamps and quick draw, there is literally one of them is going to spike up. Any silver player with a decent three point rating and quick draw and good release is gonna go way up. Bronze Dean Wade is probably gonna go way up because his release is cash off no quick draw and he's a bronze. Um, Cards like that are going to go a lot way up in price because nobody overall chooses towards the end of the month and people always do it at the start of the month. So they're the type of players that if you have any of them sitting in your collection, I would probably wait and just always just keep an eye on the players. I'm never going to tell people to sell. I'm never going to tell people to buy at this stage the way things are going because it's just too volatile to predict the market. But I have a general idea of what happens, especially because with the um, lot, it's not, I'm not even going to call it overall cheesing anymore because like you're if you're playing with an 80 overall team you literally get matched up to other people doing you get matched up one in every 10 games to a starter team you get matched up more often than not to people doing the exact same thing as you so it's literally just a case of playing with a low overall like i don't see there being i don't see there being anything immoral with playing with the low overall team um there's advantages and disadvantages to, to different tactics with it but again yeah i don't see anything immoral with it and i also do know that a lot of people are going to do it so Michael Beasley is not going to be a card to lose sleep over. Whereas I felt last, like Jerry Lucas, I did not realize his upper was going to be so bad and it was going to ruin the card. Um, Rudy is legitimately a top 10 card in the game, in my opinion. He was worth he was worth the frustration. He was worth the grind. He was worth losing sleep over. However, this Michael Beasley card just isn't it. 
he is most definitely, most definitely not worth getting frustrated over. Yeah, if you want to go 12 and 0 for him, great. He's not going to lock in for anything else. Trust me, he's not going to lock in for anything else. So if you want to go 12 and 0 with him and go and get him, great, do it. But if you're the type of person that stresses over every time you go 12 and 0, and like I'm included in that, I do it. Um, I do it for content, but I 100% stress over going 12 and 0. And I I have because I knew how good the final reward, lock in reward was going to be. However, this card just isn't it. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Trust me, it is not. It's not that it's not going to be worth the grind because if you do go 12 and 0, it's going to be a really good card. It is not good enough to stress over. Trust me. There are certain cards like Glen Rice that I felt were good enough to stress over. This is not one of them. Anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I think you only love me cause I'm poppin' This a layup, this a rebound, then it's robin' Tasting with the fade, not the air, my hands rockin'